Welcome back to another video as part of the AP Psychology course. This is lesson number 12 on neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are going to be the final topic that we study as part of the brain biology unit within AP Psychology. And so if you take a look at this slide here, there's a general chart that outlines some major neurotransmitters. Certainly some of the information you'll hear in this video is a bit of an oversimplification as there is just not time to cover everything and there are some neurotransmitters that are being left out. I've just chosen to mention these specifically as I find that uh, they are some of the more commonly tested uh, questions for neurotransmitters. So uh, it's also worth noting that our bodies can actually accept chemicals that mimic neurotransmitters some of those are going to be called agonists and we also accept chemicals that block or oppose the actions of neurotransmitters and those are called antagonists so a good example of an agonist is going to be nicotine it actually has an ability to mimic the effects of acetylcholine ACH and this is why uh, some people are going to actually smoke in order to basically calm themselves down and focus and so uh, one of the functions of acetylcholine is going to deal with basically calming, tapping into memories, etc. Antagonists, on the other hand, are actually going to block or oppose the actions of neurotransmitters. And so uh, two common antagonists that are going to be opposite of acetylcholine are actually going to be Botox and or Curare. And Curare is actually a poison that causes a temporary paralysis and is often used by remote tribes around the world in hunting where they will place them on the tip of darts. Let's go ahead and take a look, focusing just on acetylcholine. So first we're going to take a look at acetylcholine, abbreviated ACH. And this is a neurotransmitter that is going to be released by the motor neurons that will control your skeletal muscles. Now earlier we mentioned acetylcholine being mimicked, also known as an agonist, by nicotine. And this is because acetylcholine's primary function deals with regulating attention, arousal, and memory. If you happen to suffer from a lack of acetylcholine, this has been linked with forms of dementia. One in particular would be Alzheimer's disease. It's also believed that imbalances in acetylcholine levels contribute to twitching and paralysis. Next up we have dopamine, uh, abbreviated DA. And dopamine is actually going to be attributed to a number of different things. Some of the more uh, known associations with dopamine would be an excess amount of dopamine, also known as the dopamine hypothesis which is believed to be one of the causes of schizophrenia. Dopamine is also associated with Parkinsonism if there's too little of a dopamine. Dopamine is also the reward neurotransmitter. Its circuits are characterized as being part of the reward pathway and it is going to be contributed to the control of voluntary movements. Another common neurotransmitter is known as serotonin. Serotonin is associated with a number of things including depression, OCD, and eating disorders. There's actually a lot of scholarly research looking at the link between serotonin and depression. And the difficulty in linking serotonin with depression is that depression is still a fairly misunderstood illness and a not very understood illness. And so some people believe that there is no such thing as a normal brain and that if you're taking something known as SSRIs to help elevate your serotonin levels, and they come out of depression, then they say that, well, depression is linked with low levels of serotonin. But the research here is conflicting, so I'll just leave it as saying that serotonin is believed to be linked with depression, but it certainly cannot be said that low levels of serotonin are necessarily going to cause depression. It is, however, linked pretty strongly with obsessive compulsive disorder if there's too much serotonin, and it is also involved in the regulation of sleep, wakefulness, and aggression. Another more common neurotransmitter that we don't often think of is endorphins. Endorphins are actually going to be released to resemble opiate drugs in their effects in the body. So specifically looking at pain relief, they're also linked with the regulation of eating behavior. And then finally, we have norepinephrine, abbreviated NE. Norepinephrine is linked and associated with depressive disorders and is also linked with schizophrenia. Uh, too much norepinephrine is also believed to be a cause of schizophrenia, and a low amount of norepinephrine is linked with depression. This concludes a brief overview on some of the neurotransmitters. There are a few others you may want to check out, such as glutamate and GABA, and that will probably do it for the most common ones of AP Psychology, but there are certainly many, many more that you could take a look at. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.